we are uh, okay we've just now broken 50 so um i think we're about halfway through the uh the list All right, I think we will uh, now start. So um, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Alliance of Independence Agencies, zooming a industry leader into, uh, into the hot seat. And I'm delighted today that we have uh, James Gill, who is head of agency and uh, channel for EMEA for LinkedIn. Now, most of us spend a lot of our lives on LinkedIn, and uh, it's probably to many of us, um, our, our main social media platform. But uh, James, I really want to start off by asking you a little bit more about your background. How did you get here? And what is LinkedIn? What, how does LinkedIn see itself and its many facets? And then we can start to drill down into uh, some of those. Sure thing. So, hey everybody, and uh, delighted to, to see you all today. Um, or certainly to, 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 to be here. I'm also joined on the call somewhere by uh, uh, Clemence, who um, looks after the independent agencies within the within the team. Um, so uh, sure, happy to answer the question. So um, we have a field sales team within LinkedIn, um, where we look after larger and smaller clients. Um, and uh, and those individuals focus on the agency of record as well. Uh, but we also have a team, the agency and channel team. That's the team that I run, which, that focuses on the focuses on the ecosystem of agencies and partners that, of course, orbit the client um, and who are in business to help the clients achieve their objectives. Um, so that's the team that 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 I run. Uh, I've been at LinkedIn. Uh, for eight years now, I've been in various, um, uh, you see from my LinkedIn profile, um, I've been in various uh, media outlets over the last sort of 20 years. Um, the attraction for me really coming to LinkedIn was working for a brand where I really, really believe in the good um, that the, the company can do for individuals and social mobility and helping people get ahead and fulfill their dreams. So that that for me, is a big is a big reason why I'm I'm still here after after eight years. Right. So, put it into numbers. How many people are, are on LinkedIn, um, and, uh, and and what's the growth rate rate been? And and well, we maybe want to cover that at the end. Um, where where are you going? Where's, what's the what's the plan for LinkedIn, and uh, and how many people are involved in it so far? Yeah. Well, look. I mean, LinkedIn. I don't know if you remember a number of years ago, we're sort of sort of 15 years ago, uh, was this sort of online CV. Um, and we've really evolved since then from an online CV over 10 years ago to a, uh, a professional publishing platform around five years ago when people could start actually publishing and sharing information on the platform. So a situation now where LinkedIn is really a, a rich content ecosystem uh, and a vast network of uh, inter interwoven relationships um, spanning from professional to, to personal. Um, and really now LinkedIn is a place where people come to achieve, help achieve their ambitions and not just sort of be, be entertained. Um, in terms of where we're headed, um, we really want to be a place where people and businesses can get ahead and get business done and help each other. And that's really what we're about. Um, and from a member perspective, we now have um, 700 and just, well, just over 720 million members on our platform. Um, and we're now seeing the audience actually has now two times the, the buying power of the average web audience, uh, with four out of five of those LinkedIn members actually involved in driving business decisions. Um, so we actually, whilst it's, whilst it's a, a big audience, it's also a, a unique uh, audience. Um, and, you know, we've got sort of the standard unique figures there that so many of those don't go to Twitter and 12% don't visit Facebook and, 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 and the like. Um, so we're really seeing a unique audience on the platform. Um, 
and I just want to sort of point out that people are coming to LinkedIn now um, and, and are sort of flocking to these trusted sources of information um, in, in a way that we've never seen before. So 40% of our LinkedIn members are now coming to see news more frequently. Um, we've had a 60% year of increase in content creation on LinkedIn with what they're doing. Um, and 55% year of a year increase in the conversations among connections as people look to really recreate, um, sorry, reconnect with their network. So we're seeing real, real growth there. Okay. so. To our, to our audience, I mean, the independent agency audience we have today, we tend to see it in probably three ways. One is in terms of building our own profile. And Clemence, uh, 18 months ago, I think, under 18 months ago, ran a great session for us called Rock Your Profile. That was um, it, yeah. And um, so a lot of us see its value there. Then as people in agencies see it as a very valuable tool for building the agency fame, and then thirdly, it's a, you know, it's a valuable source of recruitment, i.e. looking for jobs or people looking to hire. So those are the three areas that we tend to see it most in. Where do you think out of those three, the most power lies in terms of how we should be using it? So um, I believe the, the most power lies in really thinking about what you do at your core and at your core uh, this community of individuals is about delivering value for your clients and and you're in the business uh, of, of doing that so leaning in really heavily to understanding how to drive uh, value and achieve your clients marketing objectives I believe is one of the first things that you know you, we should be focused on. Um, however, and there's you know a bunch more information we can kind of talk about that, and I'm sure you ask more questions on that. Um, however, what we have seen is that unless individuals um, understand how to use LinkedIn from a personal perspective, i.e., have a page and understand how to comment and share and and add, and add content on there. It sometimes is, it can be a sort of a, a harder sell. And we've seen huge, uh, we've seen agencies become very proficient at um, helping their clients derive value on LinkedIn, where they themselves have become great on the platform and proficient on the platform. Um, so it's sort of two, two things there that, that I think would be important. I mean, clearly, you know, one of the key roles in your area is advertising revenue, and, uh, and we've you know, a number of us have dipped our toe into into advertising in order to push our posts. But is it a B two B platform, or or have you got some examples how brands are using uh, LinkedIn as a media tool? Yeah. So. Um... There's a, uh, obviously there's a wide variety. If you think about from an audience perspective first, um, in terms of the members that are on the platform, there's a wide variety of sectors uh, that are represented, whether it's from finance, whether it's from tech, uh, fintech, autos, people in professional services industries, people in um, uh, sometimes in the, in the healthcare industries and in different departments within companies. So there's a wide, wide range of, of individuals on the platform consuming information and looking for, uh, looking for insight. Um, what that means is from an advertising perspective is that we have a number of verticals that are successful on the platform in reaching audiences that are relevant to them. So, for example, you know, the obvious one is tech, you know, tech companies um, uh, uh, invest a lot of time and energy in reaching their audiences on LinkedIn. Professionals in, in you know, the likes of whether it's Adobe, um, uh, SAP, it, 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 the likes of those. We also have um, you know, professional services also uh, investing uh, into the channel in terms of uh, getting uh, and able to reach their audiences on the channel. Government departments, finance companies, um, we're now seeing the, you know, the B2B arms of larger FMCG companies. And usually the FMCG companies are, you know, really 
in deep with the, um, the, the, the more sort of consumer social networks of the world. But we, you know, we are seeing these, you know, a lot of these businesses also sell to other businesses, right? So where are the buyers of those products? And a lot of, you know, a lot of them are sitting on, on LinkedIn. Um, we also, to your point, I think maybe this is kind of where you were going with it is, is, um, you know, high, what we, what we call, I'm not even sure whether this is a thing, but I'm going to say it anyway, high value consideration. Um, so uh, consumer goods such as, you know, autos, you know, let's say the decision making cycle for a, uh, a car, maybe over a longer period of time, right? Maybe, you know, a year or potentially more. Um, you know, the education that you, you may do, your professional education, your MBA, uh, some luxury products, they are what we call high value consideration. Um, and we see a lot of those companies as well, um, you know, Cartier, Audi, um, business schools also investing on LinkedIn. Uh, have to say here, disclaimer, if you want to sell a pair of jeans uh, or you, you know, you want to flog some water, um, LinkedIn is not, <laughs> it's not the right place. There are other places you, you might, you might be successful, but there are other places where you probably do it at a more, let's say cost effective, uh, cost effective way. And, and I suppose one of the things is, you know, you've got a lot of effective targeting, but when you've got three, 700 odd million people, and we all operate within our communities, either within markets or within, within sectors. How can we be sure that we're not getting too much leakage in it? I mean, from my point of view, I would love to be able to post to my X thousand people who are connected with me, but just stay within that, that community um, because these are people who I know or I've done business with over the, over the past. But just by posting, it doesn't get there. But if I want to do a group and not go into something which is a different kind of profile, how do I go about that? Yeah, so um, you're talking about from an individual perspective, an agency or sort of both, I mean, both. I mean, both. I mean, you know, we have, we have, we have you know, corporate pages and we have personal pages. But when we post and we can, and we, and we can push it, uh, we know that if we don't push it, it only goes to a very small percentage of our, of our existing community. Yeah, yeah. So look, there are uh, lots of different ways that you can amplify what you're what you're doing um you know what we would always suggest is that the the content you start from an organic perspective you get really clear on um uh, what that is whether it's a post for example on linkedin that you want to you want to um go broader with you sort of start thinking about what are the engagement rates of that what does that look like um but then if if for example it's doing well and you do want to amplify that there are lots of different tools with which you can do that on the platform um, and you know you're you're able to do that. Um, you know we have uh, uh, a lot of information around unique audience profiles on LinkedIn, and um, we can really help you understand who are the types of individuals that you want to see your post. Where do they work? What are their member traits? What are they interested in? So you can attract the human behind the professional. Um, we can also help you sort of match your audiences to ours as well. So you can say, well, actually I've got a, an idea of the audience that I want. And it's not just the, you know, my followers, for example, it's another audience of maybe, um, that maybe of a, a, whether it's a competitor product or they're interested in something particular, you can actually target using that as well. Um, and all the while doing it in a, in a trusted and safe environment. Um, uh, that will encourage that kind of interaction with your with your um, with your advertising. I suppose I should probably say now, if anybody's got any questions, please put them on the chat room, and we will yeah. um, work our hardest to um, to get round to them. We do have um, some uh, some people who will be asking who've already posed questions, and we'll be calling upon them um, a little later. But if anybody else has any specific questions, put them in the chat room, and we will uh, we will call upon you. But going back to that point, Jane, um, you know, you talked about people who we want like to target, but I'm just talking about some of us have built up, you know, as, a, as an organisation, we've got a good following, but we can't be guaranteed to be getting to all of that following simply by an organic post. And if we just wanted to keep it within that community, is there a way of kind of holding it into that 
possibly into that community, the people who directly follow because it goes, it goes to a small percentage, is it not? In yeah, the, so you can, um, you can um, amplify your ads to those people that are following your company page. You can send information out to your to your followers. So you have a lot of control in terms of where your um, you know where your advertising is, is seen. Um, um, so you can absolutely uh, uh, make sure that your followers uh, and any additional uh, individuals that you want can see the the content that you're that you're running um, or that you want to amplify. Absolutely. Right. Okay. As a personal, from a corporate point of view, how do how would you be advising our, our agency members to how they build their own corporate profile? Now, what what tips would you be giving those? Yeah. You know, so. Independently? So, from an agency perspective, or as an individual within the agency. Well. If, well, let's, let's start off with the agency perspective first, and then we'll come on to the individuals, because then we've got two audiences. You've got the CEO audience and you've got the people who work in the agency. But just start with the, the agency profile itself. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So look, there's a there's a there's a couple of different ways. Um, but look, the first place and you mentioned it earlier, Clyde, the first the first place is really your LinkedIn company page. And that's the place where members go to learn about your products and services. Right. So, so think of that as a start point. Uh, what you would then do is, is make sure that page is complete. Um, and there's an about tab on there to get really specific. Um, and it's just making sure that the right information is there. Um, this step is crucial because it establishes your business's credibility in the online community and enables you to be found and seen. So completed company pages we see get 30% more, more weekly views. So I guess that's step one, almost like the high hygiene factor. The second one, and it kind of maybe goes back to some of your question before, is, you know, it is really to grow your follower base. Um, and that is a really powerful source of organic reach. So on LinkedIn, we've seen that once pages get 150 followers, uh, that's 150, their opportunity for growth becomes exponential, it starts. So building out with that, that network effect. So if you follow those two very simple best practices, you'll be in a good position. Um, once you go from there, there are a number of things that you can be doing uh, on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly and a quarterly basis. Right. So for example, on a daily basis, we recommend that you really should be sharing um, a couple, maybe one or two times a day, um, uh, something from a trusted voice within your agency community. It may be something that's seen, a news article, a particular um, position maybe on something that's been in the press, but something which is coming from an established voice. And it doesn't necessarily need to be the CEO, you know, it could be someone who runs a particular team or someone's leading um, a particular initiative in, in the agency. Um, and then you've got, I'm not going to go through all of the different ones, but I just want to sort of say, you know, on a quarterly basis as well, in addition to weekly and monthly activities, you might, for example, want to invite your personal connections to follow your page. Um, and you've got to work out who within the agency, you know, you should work out how to do that. Um, we now have a a button since, um, uh, not button, sorry, <laughs> an, an option since May the 29th, you can you can uh, invite to follow feature, uh, which sends direct follow requests to your network as well. So this is all in the kind of vein of increasing the, the follower network um, uh, within your within your agency. Um, so they're just kind of just two very kind of daily and then and then kind of more quarterly examples of what you can be doing. And look, probably the, the, the biggest is is about posting engaging content. Um, and pages that post daily content get two times the member engagement. Um, and there's so many resources out there to make this easy. Um, but I would just want to sort of pause here and just say that sometimes this is the bit that people sometimes think, oh, you know, what do I post? How do I do it? Um, it's just too much, too much opportunity. And I just want to kind of make it really clear here that 
just starting is 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 the really important thing and don't let the uh what, what's the expression don't let perfect be the enemy of done it's just so just you know starting is, is the key um uh, and we we sort of think that creating a content calendar is just super helpful so you're not actually thinking about stuff in real time you sort of plan ahead and say who are we what do we want to what are our messages we want to say to our audiences um, and when do we want to do it which is very much like what you're doing for your clients and um we always think about this three to one model so we think well every week aim to publish three pieces of industry related content two pieces of what we call proud content so something that makes your employees and community feel good and then one piece about product or service related content so it's this notion of distributing content and information that's helpful for your audiences and it earns you then the right to talk about your products and services but don't lead with that sort of more you know potentially more when, blissful content so when you come to push it and therefore pay to advertise it in order to increase it what sort of uh budgets would one be looking at to you know you can buy it very highly cost effectively i know but is it is it something where there are increasing returns or should these personal pushes be kept down to something highly manageable? Um, look, from a personal or from a company, you know, uh, from an agency perspective, I, I would say it really is important to get your organic stuff sorted first um and because that's where that's where brands start their journey there's so much that you can do to amplify your reach as a as a as an agency um you know through hashtags and making sure you incorporate them through groups participation in those groups and having really meaningful dialogue there leveraging your networks and your employees and your peers uh, and mentioning companies uh, uh, when appropriate using the, the, the relevant tool, the, the at sign. Um, and look, you know, if you're doing all of that good stuff and you still you still want more, then there are, of course, options to you know, boost posts, um, uh, thinking about what else, for example, if something's done well on your company page, how do you put money behind it? and and advertise it like we were talking about it before and and, and amplify that post um i'm, I'm not going to talk about what an ideal budget is because it just depends on you know so many different variables the amount of time you want it to go for you know the, the relevant target and stuff like that um, um but yeah maybe that's not the, the right here's not the right place to sort of give you a figure there but i but i do think i would just steer the audience from a from a from a corporate perspective for your own agency to be thinking about getting that organic piece right and thinking about how you can really amplify that um for yourselves right but can an agency industry direct message to all their contacts or to specific group of connections and make it look more personalized is that a part of the package we can Clive, I'm really sorry you got out for me then. Do you mind just repeating that question? Sorry. Is it, can, a, can an agency individual send a direct message to all contacts um, or a specific group of their connections and make it look more personalised? Uh, yeah, so there are there are ways of, of doing that. Um, there are, for example, you could um, just be really clear about the uh, the members that you wanted to see, for example, like we talked about earlier. So, just making sure that you were amplifying or you were sending message out to your to your followers, um, to certain individuals that you thought was that you thought were, were relevant to you. Um, so, there's absolutely ways if you wanted to put money behind it. Then you know, the amount of targeting that you can do um, is is you know there's a, there's a lot of detail that you can do to make sure that you are um you know really clear with where your where your message lands um absolutely absolutely and that and that is the core of really the the advertising you know business like we talked about earlier really um you know understanding you know who it is you're trying to talk to we spend a lot of time with our um our 
corporate advertisers um, are on on really understanding who is it that is their real target audience and how we can build in some cases custom segments for them on LinkedIn to to really uh, drive the effectiveness and efficiency of, of the advertising and really incorporating retargeting, account targeting, contact targeting, uh, lookalike audience targeting as well. And that's some of the things that we that we build out for um, uh, uh, for you know your your, your clients. Um, to some degree, there'll be some of that kind of stuff that's going to be interesting to you as a, an agency. For example, you may say, well, look, you know, we really want to target um, this level of decision maker within these types of clients because we believe they're the ones who are currently rethinking about their agency roster or they're currently rethinking about what ad technology players we should have or how we should build out our PR strategy. And we can amplify any particular agency messages that you have to those um to those individuals and we can target by seniority, by job title, by type of company, size of company. So, I mean, sometimes when, when we're talking about this, I sometimes think, you know, imagine, you look at all the first party data that's on LinkedIn because of what people type in themselves, what they, what they voluntarily type in. Now we can generally target by all of those things and some. So that gives us this uh, incredible uh, first party data, which we can, which we can target um, and making sure that the right message is getting to them. Right. So you talk about first party data. Um, so I feel just at the appropriate time at the moment to talk about privacy and some of the questions that are being asked about. I suppose you have to put uh, LinkedIn in the same vein as other social media platforms. Um, what uh, what's your view in terms of uh, protecting privacy on uh, of certain bits of data in relation to uh, where in which you operate? So we have an unwavering view on this, right? So the promise that we have to our members and our customers is to uh, ensure that the content that we have on LinkedIn is safe, trusted, and professional. Uh, our talent, uh, our talent, our trust and security uh, teams are uh, working incredibly closely to monitor content that may come onto the platform that is potentially undesirable, that spreads misinformation or incites violence. Um, and we have rigorous trust and safety and security checks on the platform at all times to try and uh, identify where we where we have that. Um, in addition to that, we, you know, and I just want to hang on before I talk about, it, I just want to pause on that, you know, especially with the light of, you know, what's happened over the last couple of weeks and things that we've seen coming out in, in, in the U S you know, we, this has always been important to us. We have a members first, you know, it's, it's our number one value at LinkedIn. We have a members first, members first policy and, you know, making sure that, the content we have on LinkedIn is is completely in service of them is is absolutely crucial, um, and this is becoming even more important. And you know, is something which we which we uh, are incredibly serious about. Um, we we also do see um, a level of self policing, if you like, from the LinkedIn community. Um, individuals when they come to LinkedIn, I doing so with a job title, usually working for a company. So that there is, um, uh, you know, the engagement levels tend to be very professional, deep engagement, a real sort of breadth of content. Um, um, but, we, but we do see where things do go astray. The community does uh, flag on can has the facility to flag content that isn't really uh, at members first, and we will then take that content uh, down, or we'll certainly analyze it and, and, and take it down as, as, as soon as we get to it. Um, uh, so it's would, it be, would this be a reason why LinkedIn doesn't like certain third party tools like Get Prospect and other data harvesting products? Um, so we have a, um, as I said, you, 
our members data by virtue of being members first in terms of how we think about it, the data that our members entrust to us on the platform by virtue of them filling in all that information and, and using the platform on a daily basis we uh we are uh very respectful of that and we are very conservative when it comes to um, uh, where that data could be taken and used in a way that isn't in line, isn't aligned with with our members' needs. Um, so yeah, I think it might be fair to say that we're sometimes um, you know, we are very we tread very carefully uh, around this, and we apply a ton of rigor to any decisions which would involve um, you know, any data being used. And we do not like just to be really clear, we do not sell our data and the data currently uh, uh, that is used is done, for example, um, whether it's the type of content that people are looking at, we, you know, we currently have APIs uh, where we curate the, you know, the, the, the right kind of data that goes into that, that people can use in a, in a curated way, which is monitored uh, and in a safe environment. So we treat it incredibly seriously. Okay. I mean, on that point, when we talk about data, can I call on uh, Emma Phelps from AMS, um, who's got a question which actually kind of starts to look around um, Sales Navigator, which is kind of a, a way of you know, utilising our, our information. Emma, are you, uh, are you there? Should be, maybe, maybe not. Um, she should be joining uh, this rock. There she is. There she is. Emma. Hi there. Hi. Uh, hi, Joe. So uh, Emma Phelps from AMS uh, Media Group. Um, hi, Emma. Quick question um, in regards to the LinkedIn Sales Navigator tool. So it's yeah. not something that we have used before, but I think really interesting in finding out a bit more about that and whether it you feel like it would be beneficial in trying to, you know, produce leads uh, from a from a client perspective, um, and what the benefits are really. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, so, uh, ju just for the benefit of the the rest of the audience, um, Sales Navigator is the tool which is used by businesses to help them uh, uh, sell, basically. So it's, it's sort of uh, instead of uh, cold calls, if you like, to individuals. They're utilizing the sort of network effect on LinkedIn um, and identifying um, new business opportunities, new people to um, get in touch with, um, develop leads and contact strategies. Um, so we see, you know, we see a huge sort of uptick in, um, uh, uh, in a company's ability to gain traction in, when they're selling their, their goods and services using it. Um, look, I, I think there's definitely benefits to to be used um, to be using the, the the product. It will enable you to identify. Let's just say, like the example we talked about earlier, if there are certain individuals within organisations that are in line or would be interested in your particular services or service offerings, it would allow you to sort of um, tailor in a more systematic way your lead, your lead nurturing. If, if you like. Um, it also pulls in uh, other information about those individuals, if they're in the news, um, if there's anything happening that's relevant within the organization. So it enables you to be able to pitch in a much better way to those, to those individuals. Um, so look, I, I think it's a, I think it's a, a great idea. Um, we don't, we don't, just to be clear, we don't en masse sort of sell you know, sales navigator licenses to all our agencies. Um, some of them are more penetrated within their clients than others. Um, so if you're an agency who are, you know, looking for different lines of business, if you're looking for a different way of doing things or finding new clients, it can be a really, and what agency isn't, I guess, but it can be a really great tool to do that. Um, but I, I would just caveat i i would be doing it on top of actually getting you know your your company page your personal 
profiles of you know your core agency team um, once they're all up and running, because that arguably would want to be would be the first place that anyone that you reached out to via Sales Navigator would be looking at. Yeah. So it's sort of getting that house in order piece before you then go to the next stage. But um, we, you know, we can we can send more information through it and get a sort of, a, you know, what would the agency use case look like uh, on that? What would be a sort of um, how you could sort of you know, dip your toe in the water there? Uh, yeah, that's that would interesting. be. I would follow up. Yeah. That would be great. Thank you. I mean, we've had Pleasure. a question from Julie Cheatham about uh, you know, how can uh, LinkedIn assist us. Um, as, as agency uh, principals put together campaigns um, for, for our, both as our agency and a, and a client. I know when we've spoken to Clement, you know, in terms of account managers, she looks after thousands of accounts and her team looks after thousands of accounts. What's our, what's our way into LinkedIn to uh, get that assistance in uh, building those campaigns? Yeah, yeah, okay. So, um... Thank you. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, so look, so we, I want to start by saying here that we and our, our team here at LinkedIn um, see huge value in the independent agency scene. Um, and we are personally fascinated to see how the agency models and the new approaches for working with clients is coming from this sector. And we're seeing uh, a lot of innovation uh, happening and we always talk at LinkedIn about you know who are the agencies that we really lean into who are the agencies that really get what we're doing and really want to make to make this work and we're seeing some wonderful examples of that from within the sector um, and now more than ever before it feels as if the sector is transitioning to deliver real business value for clients um, versus sort of just the buying ads so I do think you know, in some in some ways, you guys are leading the charge here. We 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 applaud you for that. Um, so it's very exciting. So it's very exciting. But look, we, as I mentioned earlier, we we do have an enterprise and, a, and an SMB team um, where they work on um, accounts that are over ten grand. Um, that's the sort of the, the minimum spend, if you like. Um, and our our agency development teams have traditionally and historically focused around the, the big six, right? Um, but we are currently looking at how we build out our model to support the indie agencies in a better way. And clearly having an agency lead for each, <laughs> each indie agency is not the answer, right? So we need to come up with something, we need to come up with something better, a better model because um, we're just not going to be in a position to do that. So instead, we are looking, um, we're looking to do a much better job of ensuring the right information for you to do what you need to do is available at the right time. And it could be sourced in a self serve manner. So that rather than you thinking, I've got to pick up the phone, I've got to speak to someone and, and, and answer and ask all the questions that someone else probably asked, you know, five hours ago, you know, um, how, how can we sort of help help you help yourselves and uh you know it also underlines the importance of working with forums such as this um so you know we've got a couple of examples of of how we're doing that um because our goal really here is to empower and enable the agencies to derive value from linkedin for themselves and their clients um and we've got some examples um so Firstly, we have a, um, a LinkedIn Marketing Solutions Learning Center, which is now live with six free uh, self, um, uh, self serve courses. So there's a ton of information on there about how you can utilize LinkedIn for your clients. Um, and that's, that's all there. So we can send around these links afterwards. We'll probably, probably send around a one sheet. Maybe you can distribute Clive or that'll whatever, be, that'll be great, whatever yeah. works. Yeah. Cool. Um, um, we, we also run, uh, let, you know, like everybody at the moment, we're running a lot more webinars than we ever have before, um, like this one. And, um, you know, they are live and they're also on demand as well. So there's um, a huge treasure trove of information there for, for you to dig into. Um, we also have LinkedIn learning courses. Um, so LinkedIn learning is another large part of our business, which enables people to be successful in their current role. 
Um, and it's a huge ton of professional content on there. So there's some really great stuff on there about how to use the platform. Um, and we also have a dedicated site, uh, intranet site for agencies to help you. Uh, and this is maybe the actual direct answer to your question, um, uh, to help you respond to briefs with the latest stats, um, latest formats that we have, uh, and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and I can send a link to that as well. So there's there's a lot of self-serve information and maybe what we need to do a better job of is signposting that information to, to this community. Um, yeah. But it's all there, it's all there. Yeah. And of course, you have Clemence as well, but um, you know, I do want to, just to be clear, she is one person across this. So really Clemence's energies and efforts are focused on, you know, how do I make sure I can help this community at scale? So that's, that's. Yeah, no, no, we, we, uh, we, we value Clemence and, uh, and, and we, uh, we use her uh, wisely, as opposed to uh, all the time, but. I know she's just she has lots of energy. Yeah, she yeah, said, she has lots, she has which, lots of energy, which is, uh, which is, which she, which she certainly has, and um, and, and we missed her when she was on maternity leave, but uh, we're delighted that she's. Uh, we did too. She's, she, 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 she's, she's back. Um, but I think I think this is a kind of a really important area about how agencies access these uh, what might appear to be monoliths out there, and we had a good, you know through the session we did with Facebook, we uncovered things that were set out there specifically for the independent agency community. And you've highlighted some things that you're doing specifically for the Indies. And it just might well be about signposting. So I think what we should be trying to do is to, uh, is to share that information amongst our community and, uh, and find ways that uh, we, can, we can effectively lead people in there. Because you know, LinkedIn has almost created an industry and it's a spin-off industry in itself of, um, you know, companies approaching everybody saying that we can we can we can get you new clients we can we can manage your sales navigator campaigns and things like that um i don't know whether that's something that you will you applaud or whether you feel that uh, we should be doing some more um uh, self-management of things like that um yes there's a, there's a couple of things i just say to that so firstly there there is in addition to resources just for Indies, there are other resources as well, which we can signpost you to that can be leveraged. Like I give you an example, we uh, a year and a half now, we launched the B2B Institute, um, which is really trying to uh, get under the skin of the B2B sector, how to deliver excellence within, within, um, within the market. And there's a ton of uh, empirical, um, uh, research that we've done with uh, with bodies to really understand how people respond to advertising, how they respond to messaging, what really is the true B two B decision making cycle. So there's a ton of information like that as well that we can also signpost for you to, to leverage. Um, so I just wanted to just wanted to sort of mention that. Yeah. Um, look, in terms of the what what you're managing, we we are seeing um, we're seeing a growth in agencies who are showing up to their clients and trying to understand what their business problems are so beyond their advertising beyond their comms up to their business problems and um, looking for opportunities to add value there and there are a small subset of those who are able to manage um, the the, the company's LinkedIn strategy. And I don't just mean the sales, you know, uh, advertising. I mean, you know, what about the hiring? You know, how, how, the, how the brand is doing executive publishing, for example, um, uh, how they may be using you know, sales navigator and, and, and to your point, finding new customers. So they, they're becoming experts on LinkedIn, the agency is. Uh, and LinkedIn and B2B, I would say, not ju you know, just LinkedIn, but the sort of the B2B, B2B industry. And they are then looking at positioning this sort of service, consultancy level service um, to the client um, and positioning it in a way that solves their problems versus, you know, does a transaction to buy advertising or amplify messaging. Um, we're at the start of that journey, I think, to be fair. 
Uh, and we're trying to figure out at the moment how best we sort of help empower those individuals and, and agencies to to, uh, to to figure to figure it out. But but as ever, it's education, it's communication, and then workshopping out where things you know trying to figure out how to, to position it to to a client. Um, um, but we are starting to see more agencies who are are looking at a broader remit or looking to establish a broader remit for themselves to help their clients uh, figure out how to to get the the real value out of LinkedIn, including all the employee advocacy work as well. Yeah. Well, I think li listening for what you're saying, I'd be very keen that you know for for time on our on our website, if we can pull together those. Um, those links into your intranets and into your guide. We'll put it onto our website in order that we can um, make sure that our members have got a source that they can go through in order to do this. Because this is a this is a, is a, is a valuable um, uh, channel for them in terms of their own uh, their, their own marketing and their own place for putting thought leadership and uh, and things of uh, of that nature. And on that bit, just on that, can I uh, call in uh, Abby Hartley from Initials? It's probably going to take a couple of seconds for Terry to uh, to find her because she is very much in that uh, uh, role within an agency of uh, of promoting them. Um, so Abby, I can see you. Talk to James. Hi, Abby. Hi, uh, hi there. Um, I think you have actually probably addressed this because my main my main area of focus, um, and I'm sure a lot of agencies um, have this challenge, is to understand how we can be more targeted with content, thought leadership, um, and making sure that it's being seen by, the, by those that can actually make a difference to the agency reputation as opposed to just our peers, which, you know, yeah. it's always lovely to share thought leadership with peers, but, you know, the, there's, there's a sort of a fear that our clients might not be there, they might be too busy, you know, or, or, or or not in that particular pond, you know, further down the river at an oyster catcher's event or, uh, you know, uh, a consult consultation with, with a top end recruitment place. But um, yeah, so really it's how to, it's how to optimize um, that content and make sure it's pushed to the right people. I'd be interested in understanding what the ratio really is in terms of membership, sort of clients versus agencies, um, you know, how, how much of our, of our content is being seen by clients and does it require that unique audience profiling and that extra purchase from you guys in order to get it to the people we want to be actually viewing yeah so uh i'm gonna have to come back to you on the on the kind of the ratios um and and but i guess it depends on on, on what you're trying to do I, I guess what i would say here um is that um you if you start if, if if you start as we discussed by building out your company page and building out your follower base um then you know a lot of your information goes goes to that follower base and if your follower base is those people who are you know your, your clients already um uh, or, or new customers for example then that's kind of where that's obviously where it's, it's, it's going to go but if actually you're looking to target a net new audience, or you're saying we, you know, we need to change what we're doing here. There's a whole a cut of an organisation, maybe across a number of organisations or a particular vertical. Um, then you know there are other there are other ways to do it. Um, and we talked about it was either you know, getting specific content that is right. It might be um, uh, uh, um, making sure that what you're doing is resonating to a certain audience but there is absolutely no doubt if you if you really want to be directing if you don't have a huge follower base already from that specific audience and you want to take a message and deliver it to them then paid and you know paid amplification is is the way to go um that, that, you know, I, I, I said you'd probably yeah. looked at it about that key targeting uh, that you can target specific profiles um, of an audience and say, right, if you want to deliver that thought leadership content to that level of um, seniority at that kind of company, then then that's paid for. Yes, 
Yeah. Yes, okay. yes. Unless you already have this sort of huge burgeoning network of followers who are already seeing, you know, what, you, what you're doing. But if you're at the, more at the beginning of the journey and you kind of want to accelerate that, then then yes. That's a quicker uh, way of doing it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and James, so, what's the, sorry, sorry, sorry to you, uh, uh, Abby, what's the balance between uh, LinkedIn premium members and therefore people paying premium versus those that are using it as a kind of a, uh, an advertising tool and therefore, you know, bypassing the premium in, in terms of your earnings? Oh, that's, it's a good question. Um, I don't actually know. I, I, I think I've got a rough idea, but I'm, I don't know for sure, so I might have to come back to you on that one, Clive. Yeah, no, it's just, it, it's, should we be, if we're trying to make the most of the platform, should we be being premium members or should we be looking at the, the, the as an advertising solution? Okay, okay, so, so should you, as a, okay, so, I mean, I would suggest for your organization, for maybe a, a select group, for example, then being premium opens up many, many different opportunities for you in terms of what you're in terms of what you're doing, for sure. Um, it might not be that everybody in your whole agency needs to be on a on a kind of premium premium basis. But if, for example, you know, you've got the core part of the marketing team um, and the CEO, for example, and a few others that, you know, there's definitely a uh there's definitely a, an argument to say that you you know you generate some some benefits from from doing that um i'm happy to sort of clarify what they would look like as well in this document um just so that you guys can be clear from a you know what should we do from an agency um perspective um i sort of come back to though so many people get um uh, 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 kind of distracted sometimes by that, and, and 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 but really nailing the corporate, you know, nailing your page, nailing your content, getting the messages out there, and building trust within a community, and establishing that over time, is really the the main way to be successful uh, on LinkedIn in in the longer term. Um, so it kind of goes back to that that kind of. Uh, that work around your company page and posting engaging content. Yeah, and that one, two, three uh, ratio thing you were talking about before. Yeah. yeah. Um, is that a balance between uh, quality and quantity? You've got to keep. You've got to keep the messaging up. Yeah. Look, I mean. That's that's a, a a guideline, but um, the the focus really on that is, or the nuance on that is that you are doing it for your you're thinking about your audience. You're thinking about what is it that they really care about versus a what we would call a self serving message. Um, so 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 that's it. In terms of the the quality and quantity, we would always argue that the quality has to be high. Now the quantity you could it could be short form. For example, you know you could go out with a longer you know, a longer post. It could just be resharing something that's particularly interesting in your industry. Um, but really thinking about you know what are your audience needs, um, what is your expertise, what do you have expertise and credibility in, um, and what is your you know your unique perspective as an agency and how you're bringing that in an authentic way to your, to your market. Um, but as I said, it could be articles, short form posts, so, um, videos so, or commenting. Yeah. And are we seeing more uh, video content as the word, as, as in other platforms leading on versus, versus copy on LinkedIn as, as you are on Facebook and, uh, and other platforms? Yeah, absolutely. Um, tons more video content. Um, lots more engagement with video. What we're also seeing is a much more human voice and tone coming through with, with a lot of the communication as well. It's this nature of um, uh, business, rather than B2B, it's this you know, business, business to human. You know, it's this notion of actually there is a human behind the, 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 the business decision maker. Um, so absolutely more video, but with a real yeah, human human touch about it. Yeah, I remember from uh, Clemence's presentation, 
you know, this idea of you know, making sure that you feature people and make sure that you're tagging people. And Absolutely. Make sure it's it's that that carries far more uh, weight than uh, just just information without yeah. uh, bringing a personal touch to it. Absolutely. And one of the things that I, um, uh, I that, that, that always amazes me, we've got a, a the former vice chairman of Merrill Lynch, um, John Thiel, um, said that what surprised him most about publishing on LinkedIn was that me uh, being him, so me being me, if you like, was more popular than me being the head of Merrill Lynch Wealth Management. And it's, you know, not everyone have kind of got to that stage and they think they should be this real sort of um, a sort of formal version of themselves, but actually uh, this this sort of level of authenticity, this real human voice, is becoming ever more uh, present on LinkedIn and an incredibly powerful tool if it's done right. Whether it's done right by your agency, by your by your individuals within your agency, and if you can get your clients to be thinking about what their unique voice is as well, we're seeing much more engagement with with content that has that human human voice. It's, it it stands out from the crowd. And that stands ahead of uh, hashtags, because you know you're invited to put hashtags in and then put suggestions. But um, uh, and personalising it over a hashtag might be preferable. Yeah, I mean, I would um, I would do both. Uh, one is about tone. One is about amplification. So the, the hashtag great for amplification. It just helps people find and navigate that particular bit of content. Um, whereas the actual content itself, uh, having a, a, a sort of human, a human feel about it, it, it becomes much more emotive and much more powerful. If you, if you believe that all human beings are you know, emotional and personal individuals, e even within the workplace, um, then, then that is a surefire way of generating uh, interaction and engagement on the platform. And as we get, as we get closer to the end, the question which was quite early on, and I suppose it's because it's a more of a macro thing, being part of Microsoft and, um, and the Microsoft tools, um, is there, is there going to be closer integration over time and you know, making uh, greater integration with 365 and other things or, or, or they, are the uh, businesses running in parallel? So um, one of the really unique things about when Microsoft uh, acquired LinkedIn is that the acquiring team was led by someone from LinkedIn versus from, from Microsoft and, and that they, they they were very keen from the start to uh, make sure that the that they could sort of help LinkedIn be successful but they didn't want to sort of smash the two organizations together there are a, a bunch of integration and opportunities that are, are under discussion around at the moment you know imagine if you could infuse a lot of the LinkedIn professional data into Microsoft's productivity tools in a way that would help you um, as you manage your calendar and your diary or um, such things as imagine if you instantly could put your, um, I think it's like 80% of CVs are done on a, a Word document, you know, imagine if they could instantly go up to, to LinkedIn. Um, you know, there are a bunch of things that we're working with them on, um, some AI ideas around understanding audiences, but it's it's um i'm not gonna say it's early days it's not early days uh but the businesses at the moment are really focused on 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 their own key visions and and, and what we're looking to do um so we don't see any huge groundbreaking changes in the next year or so and there's a lot and as a last question um uh, we've seen over the last nine months this digital transformation and that's us working from home which makes platforms like LinkedIn even more more important and it's made yeah. things like um, Slack and those other business tools become even even more valuable. Um, what's been your biggest uh, discovery over the last nine months as an organization as to where you've where you accelerating faster over the uh, next six months than you might have done over the next six years? As, a, as an organization or from a yeah. platform perspective, an organization, um, look, it's accelerated uh, the way that we think about collaboration. So we've always known that collaborating 
um, and bringing diverse thoughts and, and, and people together to collaborate to solve problems is incredibly important, but it's made us think much more intentionally about how you go about doing it, because right now it's really hard. And we have to think in a much deeper version, like what does that look like when we come back to the office? What does the working week look like? Should everybody be sat at their desks, you know, nine till five? Well, the answer, you know, the answer is definitely, well, no, we, 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 we need to, for us, I would say it's creating opportunities so that people can really collaborate together to solve problems is the is the biggest takeout for us. So we're really optimizing around the workplace around that going forward. Right. So there's a there's an element of not quite slack about it, but working in more collaborative, smaller communities. Yeah, quite possibly, especially where there is a particular project or initiative and you have a collection of um, individuals working on that. How do you create an environment where each of those are engaged and and you can create the um, uh, everyone is able to bring the, the, their best selves to that to that conversation? Um, you know, our old way of doing it was, you know, a meeting room. We turned up at, and we turned up for an hour and then we all left and. But you know, is, is that really the right thing to do? If someone was on VC, it would be kind of challenging for those people who are in, in the meeting rooms. You know, is that is that is that the right way to do it? So I think you know that that's a big that's a big big focus for us. Um, and then just the finally, just the other point is around thinking about um, outcomes. So rather than thinking about inputs and activities in terms of your working day what really the outcomes that we're looking to achieve and how do we focus on those and give people much more freedom to uh, work out the the inputs and the way that they want to work it's a huge learning for us that everybody is in a very different situation from a home life perspective and if we can kind of create a work environment where there is endemic flexibility that makes allowances for that we can ensure that business outcomes are still high and growing. Um, so really understanding the, the you know, the individual, uh, the individual employee and, and, and how do we enable them to work in, in a way that enables them to, to work for their life is, is something I think all organizations globally, including everyone around this table right now, are trying to figure out because if we can do that, we're in a, a wonderful situation where people can feel like they're engaged with their role, with their company, and delivering value in a way that doesn't take away from their personal life, but but, but adds. And that's yeah. something that, that I'm really passionate about, and we are passionate about that at LinkedIn, at getting that right. Well, that's a very good way to um, to end, because uh, could we share that passion? And, uh, and I'll reiterate that once Clemence and James have sent those uh, links and those tools we will put it up on the website we will share it with the people who are uh, on the call and we will find a way of actually building a bridge between the alliance of independent agencies and uh, and linkedin in order that uh, we can uh, more easily navigate our way around the platform because i think that's really the, the real take out for me um from the session uh, with you james is is uncovering all those things that perhaps we didn't know because we probably have not delved too deep under the bonnet um, and there's some really uh, rich stuff there. And I think I can speak for everyone on the call because um, we've had a, you know, a very good uh, rate of attendance and people staying on throughout. Um, but you know, LinkedIn is a very important business tool for us, not only personally, um, for us building our own personal profiles, but also for building our agency profiles and also using it as a, uh, as a client tool. So um, if nothing else, um, and there'd be many things today to uncover a lot of those, uh, those gems that you've got under the bonnet and make them available to uh, uh, our members and our community um, would be a, has made it a very, very valuable hour. So James, thank you very much indeed for that. It's been my absolute pleasure. Um, Thanks for having me. And uh, it's been really good. And uh, we look forward to seeing you and Clemence and, and the team um, on future occasions. All right. Sounds wonderful. So thank you all very Hold much indeed for your time. It's been really good. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.